Hello and welcome to Criss Cross Media. My name is Chris and you're watching Scrap. It's a show where I give you guys a history, current status, and possible future of various products like movies, TV shows, places, toys, and games that were, well, unfortunately scrapped. Now, for the start of this one, I'm just going to give it to a special friend to just kind of kick it off. With great power comes great responsibility. That was that was I was inspired. I don't know about you guys. That was that was really nice. Thank you, Ben. Uh, let's go to the next Ben. You could do good things for other people. You had a moral obligation to do those things. That's what's at stake here. Not choice, responsibility. What the hell was that? Are you guys inspired? What what were you thinking, Ben? Go back to the other guy. <laughs> oh my! No! No! What happened? No! How is this? <laughs> yes, even one of the most iconic superheroes isn't safe from being scrapped, and not from a terrible villain or a foe, something far, far worse. Executives from Sony. Ugh. Oh my god. And this hero, you ask? He's the one and only. Who is Spider Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. And while this web slinging menace has been scrapped actually more than once, with three different actors playing the Man Spider over the course of six films, and currently one in production, today I'll mostly be focusing on one particular film that will unfortunately never see the light of day. But before we can swing into that, let's have a classic origin story of how and where this all began. In 1962, after the success of the Fantastic Four, Marvel Comics editor Stan Lee began working on a new hero, one that could satisfy the new teenage demand for comics, one they could identify with. And thus, Peter Parker was born. So zooming forward, this arachnid man was a household name. The huge phenomenon that was Spider-Man was literally everywhere. The comics, live action TV series, toys, games, rides, cartoons, even this guy who climbed a building in Chicago as Spider-Man. Pretty much everything you could think of, Spider-Man was there. Oh my god. Everything except cinema. So in 1990, Calico Pictures bought the rights for a Spider-Man movie to be written, produced, and directed by, you would never guess, James Cameron. Whoa. Okay. I'm listening. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> You see, James Cameron was a huge Spider-Man fan, and it was actually his dream to direct a Spider-Man movie, so he got to work almost immediately creating the script that apparently Stan Lee absolutely adored. So with everyone on board, what happened? Why didn't we get this James Cameron Spider-Man movie? Well, a lot happened actually. The script was very edgy. Just imagine for a second, Peter Parker swearing like a sailor. with R-rated violence, Spider-Man spying on Mary Jane changing, <sighs> even a sex scene on the Brooklyn Bridge. While this seems very much like Cameron's work, everyone's friendly neighborhood creeper would not be marketed towards kids, and that is your target demo. There is a rumored cast list that Cameron had. And of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger is there playing Doc Ock. I mean, it's terrific, right? <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio as Harry Osborne, Drew Barrymore as Gwen Stacy, Eddie Furlong uh, as Peter Parker. And Spider-Man would have battled Doc Ock, Electro, and Sandman with a climactic battle atop the World Trade Center. With Cameron wanting to go big with this film, a rumored budget of just $50 million was given to him, and he didn't have the funds to make his dream a reality. With the financial problems of Carlico and the film rights up in the air, the production was tangling in its own web and was later scrapped. Zoom forward to the early 2000s where Sony Pictures acquires the rights to the franchise and brings Sam Raimi to direct. And let's just say it was incredible. It redefined the superhero genre. It got amazing reviews, it brought in millions, breaking record after record. It was perfect. But then in 2004, the series got its first sequel, Spider-Man 2, with Spider-Man fighting Doc Ock. And not only was this considered better than the first, it is still to this day arguably one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Development of Spider-Man 3 began immediately after the second. Raimi had written his film and was ready to shoot, until of course Sony executives and producers shoved their fat, grubby fingers into the script and tweaked and toyed with his ideas, demanding the presence of Venom and other very things. While this film originally divided fans and critics, it was still a box office hit, making almost a billion dollars at the box office. And while Spider-Man 3 was intended to bookend the story of Peter Parker, I think everyone felt this franchise deserved a better ending. And so, Sony announced in 2008 that a fourth film, and a fifth film, and a sixth film were in development at the studio with Spidey 4 tentatively titled Spider-Man 4 The Mysterious Vulture, with the release date for summer 2011. They toyed with the ideas of exploring Dr. Kurt Connors trans transformation into the lizard, having a more significant role for Bruce Campbell as a rumored Mysterio. I said, Becker, 
with Anne Hathaway playing the Black Cat. And lastly, we have John Malkovich, who was apparently going to play the main baddie, the Vulture. Is he not perfect for this role? I'm, I wish this honestly happened. Like, I'm gonna be, you know what? Oh crap, my cookies are ready. One second. Started baking some cookies before, uh, before the video started, so I'm just gonna, real quick, guys. Sorry, God, one purpose. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, these came out great. Oh, that. That is, oh that's perfect. That is perfect. Oh, come on. Oh. Don't you just hate when you burn a batch? <sighs> All right. I'm back. Okay, so what happened? Everyone's returning. We have a few new faces and a great villain to work off of. How did this not come out? Well, okay, Sony really pushed for a 2011 release date because they wanted to retain the film rights to Spider-Man. And with the date looming and getting closer and closer, Raimi felt that he couldn't get it right for the fans. He wanted to make a film that he felt audiences deserved. And with the small window he was given by the studio, he chose to just scrap the project, step away, and that was it. He did have this to say. It really was the most amicable and undramatic of breakups. It was simply that we had a deadline and I couldn't get the store to work on a level that I wanted it to work. I was very unhappy with Spider-Man 3, and I wanted to make Spider-Man 4 to end on a very high note, the best Spider-Man of them all. But I couldn't get the script together in time, due to my own failings, and I said to Sony, I don't want to make a move that is less than great, so I think we shouldn't make this picture. Go ahead with your reboot, which you've been planning anyway. And that was it. Sony immediately announced the series would be rebooted for a 2012 release. And since then, some leaked concept art for Spidey 4 was released, giving us a glimpse of what we may have gotten. I'm Sam Raimi, the director, and, and my, we have um, a certain banter or dynamic right. that, that's fun and funny, and I love collaborating with him. So there's some familiarity that I really love and also I like the new and okay how do we how do we press this how do we make it more exciting more fun how do we evolve the character and make it a, a rich story and how do I make it interesting for myself to go do something else you know um, so yeah I appreciate that too I, I have fun with those movies I really do and it really doesn't end there. Oh no, the Amazing Spider-Man series starring Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone is unleashed to the world with mixed reviews and modest decent box office. Should have called it the, well, there it is, Spider-Man. Then in 2014, we are gifted with a sequel which all but guaranteed its death, killing any hope for the then planned cinematic universe for the Thank series. God. So Sony is at a crossroads. What to do with this iconic character? There's hope, maybe? There was plans for a Venom spinoff, a Sinister Six, movie, heck, even an animated Spidey flick. It was then, on February 19th, 2015, Sony announced that it broke a deal with Disney and Marvel Studios to have Spider-Man join the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Thanks. Spidey was back home. Hey everyone. And it was announced he would be getting his own Marvel Studios film titled Spider-Man Homecoming. I get the pun. This is the right decision for the franchise, for our business, for Marvel, and for the fans. Don't you just love his enthusiasm? And this gets me excited. I'm telling you right now, my Spidey senses are definitely tingling. With Disney and Marvel Studios swinging with our webbed hero now, all I can say is that, you know, I'm excited. I think they totally understand that with great power comes great responsibility and fan backlash. They don't get it right because I swear to God, Andrew Garfield is And that's how James Cameron's Spider-Man, Spider-Man 4, and the Amazing Spider-Man Cinematic Universe <laughs> was all, unfortunately, scrapped. And that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed the fifth episode of Scrapped. If you enjoyed this, please hit the subscribe button and support the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. I promise you'll find something you like. There are so many other Scrapped ideas I've been researching, like in the next episode, I'll tell you guys all about the Scrapped Disney's Epic Mickey games. There's more than one. There's like a whole cinematic universe and spinoffs they had planned. It's crazy. Plus, a few other Disney things I'll just throw in there because I know you guys will enjoy them. And if you didn't catch the last episode of Scrapped, I talked all about Scrapped Pokemon. I'm telling you guys, I'm still sad we'll never get Pika Blue. <laughs> I want it. And if there's Scrapped ideas you guys want me to tackle, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. As always, follow me on Facebook and Twitter for updates. I just post random things on the daily. Hope to see you guys next time. I'm Chris, and you've just been Criss Cross. Peace out, guys.